Welcome back to The Painting Coach and in this tutorial we're going to be painting Laukavai, the Mother of Nightmares. Alright, let's talk Laukavai, the Mother of Nightmares. So in terms of the build, I've built most of it, I've left the head off which uh, there's the head there uh, and I've already I left this bit off as well and I've already painted that so I know uh, what I'm going to be talking about through the video so we'll glue that on later so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint all the flesh uh, now it's really important that you just give it a, a nice kind of even coverage I've primed it all with grey sear it's like a light grey and I'm going to take celestra grey and use this over all the flesh so it's very thin you can see on the palette there I just want to paint this over the entirety of the beast and also any uh, flesh on Laukavai herself. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right, but that's what we're, we're going with. So get that all done, let it dry, and then we're going to come back in and we're going to work on the armour first, get that finished, and then we'll uh, work on the beast and the wings. So next up, we'll make a start on the armour because we can do that, and if we need to tidy up at the end of the other bits, we can. So I'm using Nagaroth Knight. Um... I'm just going to paint this over uh, all the armour uh, that's going to be purple. So now over the grace here, you may need a couple of coats just to make sure it covers properly. I'm trying out a new brush today as well. One of my patrons very kindly sent me uh, the Squidmar brushes from his uh, Kickstarter. So we'll give them a go and see, uh, see what we're like. So just work your way around, get all that armour painted with the Nagaroth Knight. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, start the process of highlighting. So I've not been particularly tidy with uh, with the purple. I've just covered it over uh, in general. So I'm going to take Zarya's purple. And I'm going to use this to just highlight those kind of raised areas. Again, fairly roughly. I'm just leaving the Nagaroth in the in the recesses, and this will get you a nice kind of uh, a nice effect which helps you build a nice rich purple, yeah, which is what uh, what you're looking for. You don't have to worry too much about shading with uh, with anything because the, the Nagaroth is, is dark enough on its own. So where you can catch edges, just roll the brush across them. And again, you can see I'm not being hugely tidy with doing this. I'm just building up that, uh, that effect. So work your way around the model doing that, and then we'll come back with some more highlights next. So we'll refine those highlights quite a bit now. I'm going to use uh, Gene Steeler Purple for this. So Gene Steeler Purple for me, or at least my pot, is fairly thin. Um, so again, what you're looking to do where you can is catch those edges of the armour. And hopefully that should be fairly, fairly straightforward. So you see there, I'm just working my way around any mistakes. You can always go back in and uh, and cover them up using the, the Zarius purple. In general, it should be okay. Fairly straightforward, so that one's a bit thick, so I'll go and repair that. And then we'll come back and we'll just add a final sharp highlight. Starting to get a sharp looking purple now, so the last thing we're going to do is take some Slanesh Grey. And we're just going to use this on the uh, the sharpest part where we're going to be catching some light. Just along there, kind of the top parts towards the, the tips there. Just accentuating the shape and just catching where we can using the, the design of the plastic, or design of the model. So just work your way around, pick out those bits that you want to highlight, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll, that's the purple finished. Uh, we'll do the black next, so we've got some black cloth and the tips and bits and the handle of the sword. Uh, and then we'll uh, we'll get that done before we move on to the metallics. So in terms of the black, we've got this, uh, got this tabard here. So I'm just using some Abad and Black. I'm just going to paint the, the tabard. I, I want to be careful around the purple, but I'm not and obviously there's flesh, but I'm not too worried about going over any of the other bits because we are going to paint all of those uh, in sort of metallics shortly. So I'm just going to paint over them 
quite messy. I've thinned this down quite a bit, uh, so you can see it's not particularly covering uh, very well, so we'll put two coats on. Uh, the other thing I want to paint while I've got this black out and on my brush is the spikes, or the end of the spikes, not the, the wings. So you should be careful on the wing because we're going to do a lot of blending. Uh, and also things like the um, the bits of uh, arm, sort of the uh, within the armour here, the undersuit, uh, handle of the sword, uh, and all the claws as well on the feet. So I'm going to do that. So work your way around, get it all done. Again, take your time. You know, be careful around the bits you've already finished. And then we'll come back in and we'll highlight uh, highlight that black next. For the first highlight on the black, I'm going to use a mix 50-50 of Chaos Black, not Chaos Black. We're going back 10 years. Uh, <laughs> a Bad and Black and Mechanica Standard Grey. It's going to look to pick up all the kind of the raised areas like that along the edges as well. So essentially the Bad and Black is forming the, the deepest shadow. So work your way around, get that uh, covered up covered off and then we'll come back with a bit of a sharp highlight we're not doing the claws and the bits on the wing there we're going to do them a different color but all the other bits of black we're going to do uh, with this one for that sharpest highlight then we've just got some pure mechanica standard gray not too much on the brush we're just looking to catch those raised areas and paint it in where we can so that'll give you a nice uh, nice subtle black Hopefully it won't be too harsh. If you make any mistakes, then of course go back in and fix it with either the mix or with the Abad and Black from underneath. And I'm just adding this a little bit at a time to make sure that it doesn't uh, overpower the model or get out of control. So work your way around that again, leaving the claws, uh, and we'll come back to do the leather straps next. So there's a few leather straps on the model, and the colour we're going to use to, to base these is Dryad Bark. So I'm just trying to show you as best I can here, just paint over all of them. Where we've still got that kind of grey sea base, we're going to have to add a second coat. So take your time with this one because you don't want to kind of spill over onto any bits you've already finished. Don't worry if you get the buckles covered because obviously we're gonna, we'll paint those separately. Uh, but just work you around, catch all the straps. There's a couple around the front as well and then we'll come back and uh, we'll highlight it next colour we're going to use to uh, highlight that leather is just a little bit of Gothor Brown and what we're looking to do, I don't know if you can see that there, is just catch the, the upper and the bottom edge just creating the illusion of that highlight all the way around. So do that for all the leather and then we'll come back and uh, we'll do the loincloth next. Uh, before we have a look at the metallics. So the loincloth is kind of like a red. So what I've done just to save on paints, I've taken some corn red and just mixed some of that black in. And I'm going to use this to base the loincloth. Take my time around those uh, bits that I've already finished around the skin, etc. So nice and uh, easy to base it like that. And then what I can do is take that pure corn red which you see I've not actually cleaned my brush and just paint this over those kind of raised areas leaving the the mix in the recess and then the corn red above so do that and then we'll come back and we'll highlight it next and just to give that a little sharp highlight just going to take some evil sun scarlet I've thinned it down a bit and we're just looking to catch those raised parts and along the edges there so a nice easy highlight. It might be quite bright to start with, but as it dries it'll just blend in nicely. So there we are, that's the loincloth done, nice and simple. So we'll move on to the metallics next. There's not a huge amount of silver on the model. But I'll just take some Iron Warriors uh, and use this to paint the sword uh, itself. Just being careful when we kind of come down to those bits we've finished. There's also the uh, the kind of uh, rosary type things here, so I've paint as much as I can with a big brush before I go into the smaller brush, and obviously along there as well. 
And that's really it for the silver. Uh, most of it's just kind of like a brassy gold colour, so get that done uh, and we'll highlight it all next. Highlighting all the silver is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, and you can use a little bit of chrome from Vallejo Model Air. You can use um, Mithril Silver if you live 10 years ago. I don't know what's wrong with me today. I've come up with all the old paint names. Um, Stormho Silver, I believe is it. So for the beads, you can just dot the bead, leaving the darker colour in the recesses. And then for the sword, just want to catch the edges and just run the brush along it just like that top bottom and in the middle it'll give you a nice nice effect so get that done and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll be on to the brass color next okay with the silver done let's move on to the brass so the color we're going to use to base it all is a little bit of balthazar gold now there's quite a few bits of brass so we've got the uh i want to call them scales Yes, just take your time, be careful with them. We've also got a lot of trim on the armour. So just be careful with going near things we've already finished. And where you can, use the edge of the brush just to, to pull it along. We've also got lots of little um, buckles. We've got the the hilt of the sword and the, the design along here. And then we've got the design on the front of the armour as well. So. Get that all painted with the Balthazar Gold, all the buckles, and then we'll come back uh, and shade it next. If you're not sure uh, what you're meant to be painting, just check the box art, because I'm, I'm following that roughly, um, in terms of the colour scheme and the colour guide. So with all that trim done, we need to shade it. And the colour I'm going to use for this is Coelia Green Shade, because it'll just give that kind of weathered uh, look to the brass. Now you don't want to flood the area and certainly for some of the uh, things like the buckles you just want to be really sparing with it. But this just kind of gives it that that bluey uh, verdigris effect you can see on uh, some of the boxes. Just work your way around all of it, a little bit of it, you know don't go wild. Mainly in those sort of areas you know on these kind of bits here which have got the the model and the shape to produce a little bit of uh, a little bit of variation and once that's done let it dry and we'll come back and highlight it all next once that coelia green shade's dry you're just going to take some sycorax bronze to highlight uh, some of it so just look for those edges and paint in that highlight around there leaving the colour in the recesses. When it comes to these scales, just highlight each one individually. There's not many so you know it won't take you too long. Uh, and where you can use the shape of the model just to sh highlight it up. Now I'm probably going to leave it there. If you want to make it a little shinier then you can probably add a little bit of uh, chrome uh, to some of the elements but I'm happy with that. Just take your time and then when it comes to these designs you just want to I like those raised areas, leaving the coelia green shade in the recesses as best you can. I like those buckles as well, all these sharp bits. So there we are, that's all the metallics done. And then when we come back, we'll uh, we'll make a start on the wing and the body. But what I will say as well is any um, celestial grey where you may have made a mistake i made a few bits there go and tidy that up first then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll get on with it so let's get going on the wing and the flesh and everything so we can pull this all together so first thing we're going to do is on these membranes just take some pterodon turquoise contrast paint and spread it out so you don't make it let it pool but just spread it out all over these membranes then take your time because you want to preserve the spines here so you want to keep those in the uh, celestra grey that you've already put down uh, and don't worry it shouldn't dry too blotchy but what we want to do is the just the one coat isn't quite dark enough for what we want to do so let it dry completely and then once it's dry add a second coat and then we'll come back and we'll have a little look at then blending to the the, the darker colors getting these spines blend into the light colors as well 
Once uh, that pterodon turquoise is dry, we're sticking with pterodon turquoise, but this time we're going to thin it down uh, three parts contrast medium to one part pterodon turquoise. And we're going to paint the rest of these parts here, so you can see the spine. You can see obviously that's a lot lighter. So what we want to do is we want to work our way around the spines. And then once this is dried, this kind of from maybe about halfway back, we're going to put a second coat on. Let's just work it around. The other thing we need to do, whilst we've got this mix out, it's a few things really. I just want to make sure we're kind of still in focus. I want to paint the bottom half of each leg, sort of uh, to about there. So paint the whole thing. But what you want to do as well is clean your brush off. And just paint back so you get a little bit of a, a blend in there. We will highlight it all, which will kind of blend it together nicely anyway. Uh, and we're also going to do the same thing in the middle of the back here. So it's going to paint a line down and we're just going to move it towards the, the centre of the back. I'm going to clean the brush off. And we're just going to blend it back across like that. Thinning it all out. Like I said, when we come to put the the highlights and things on it'll blend it together. What we want to do as well is we want to move this and keep it moving progressively darker. So the lower down you get, the further back we want it to be darker. So I'll let it dry and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to do that. So while we wait for other parts of this to dry, I'm just going to show you very quickly on this part here. It's using the same mix of three to one, contrast medium to um, tear it on turquoise. And we're just kind of starting at a bit lower to get that kind of blend all the way through there. And that's it's really easy, really simple. If you're not confident doing it, try it on uh, like a spare mini first. Uh, but it is really easy, really straightforward. And if you put too much on, just clean your brush off in some water. Make sure you got a little bit of water on your brush and then just go wild. So nice and easy. Do that around all the bits you've already done. And then uh, we'll come back and then we'll start to darken down the wings so it blends into those uh, black spikes and also we'll blend the feet down a bit as well so they blend into uh, blend down to black as well. Once we're happy that that's all dry, we're going to do some more contrast medium and contrast paint. So it's Black Templar. Now this is one part Black Templar to ten parts contrast medium. Now if you haven't got Black Templar, you can use a bad and black just to thin it down make sure it's really thin and what we're looking to do is we're looking to paint so from that kind of joint there these are going to be all black and in terms of the wings it's probably about halfway of the wings that are going to be are going to be black as well and what you'll see is as it dries they'll start to blend together so move it round and keep it moving and then because this is so thin it makes it really easy to blend and control the amount of uh, paint you've got. Obviously, don't forget to do the other side. Um, now, there are some other key parts to do with this black as well. So, if we look, for example, at the leg, uh, what we're looking to get is that kind of maybe bottom half. We want to blend that down to black as much as we can. And again, once this dries, it will it, it obviously will dry and blend as it dries. So that's a really easy, nice effect we can get. And then judge it for yourself. Now I'm going to go to this hair, the hair areas as well. And sort of towards the back of them, I'm going to add this in, painting it, making them darker. Just like that. And you can see that it, very little effort, but we're getting a decent little blend going on. And then for the back for the spine itself just down the middle of the spine I'm going to work that black in and maybe to about there on the tail so what I'm then going to do is I'm going to let that all dry and I'll come back in and I'm going to do the same thing again but but lower down so when it comes to the hair that back half and when it comes to the foot probably from about there down so do the same have a play around if you're not sure take your time do a little bit and then come back do a little bit more uh, but I'm probably going to add two or three coats of this black on. Um, and then we'll start to think about how we're going to highlight it all. 
while we've got the black Templar contrast paint out I'm going to use this for the hair and I'm just going to paint this all over try not to get any on the face if you do then just use uh, Celestra Grey to cover it up uh, but I'm just going to use this for now because it just it covers it nicely it's fairly straightforward to do we'll put the stripe back in later so get that done on the hair now if you want to do the uh, same as the box art where it's a little bit lighter towards the bottom you can just clean off some of that black templar using a, a clean brush just keep working it until you get slightly lighter like the hair that works for me so get that done and then we'll come back and uh, we'll jump back onto the uh, main model the last bit of contrast and contrast medium mixing we're doing is griff charge gray and this is mix one part contrast medium to one part griff charge gray and basically we're going to use this and paint it all over the rest of the model so when you come to those areas that you've already kind of finished you can just pop it alongside and it'll, as it dries, hopefully blend into it uh, a little bit. So just work your way all the way around the model with this mix. Let it dry and I think we're at the point then we'll come back and highlight it. Uh, don't forget obviously to do her face. Don't worry about doing the whole thing, just con uh, concentrate on those features. Uh, and then we'll uh, come back and we'll start all the highlighting. Okay, so let's start highlighting our way up through this then. So the first highlight we're going to do is Temple Guard Blue. And this is for these parts of the wing here where that pterodon turquoise is brighter. So what we're doing is we're just looking for catching any rips, any bumps. We're looking really to try and pull the brush along as much as we can. Where we can't pull the brush along, we're just going to work it into the recesses. I think my paint's probably a little thick there. It's very warm in my studio today, which, even though I've got the wet palette, things are drying out fairly quick. So we want to kind of build that up. The other thing we want to do as well is where we've got the, the colours on the... We just want to work it between the, the black and the pterodon turquoise there, just to help us have a a bit of a highlight there, which will help us blend. So work your way around the model, getting that all highlighted, nice and simple. If you can, use the side of your brush, just like that. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, have a look at highlighting the black. Next up for highlighting, we'll do the black, and the colour we're going to use for this is Mechanicus Standard Grey. And don't forget, I'm going to do her hair as well, but I'll do that off cam, but exactly the same way as this. So we're just looking to catch those wide open bits of membrane on the wings a little bit, working our way down here as well, down these spines. Leave these for a minute, because we're going to do them, we're going to highlight those with red. Uh, and we'll show you how to do that once we've done the black. So really we're just working our way along here using the edge of the brush where we can to do the work for us and get a nice crisp highlight. And also top tip to help them blend in is just to paint that grey up to the temple guard blue that we've done. So work your way all the way around doing that and we'll come back then we'll do the tips and all the nails next or claws I should say. For the red highlights we're going to go back to some corn red, don't have too much on the brush and we're just looking to drag this along the kind of talons coming out of the wings so that's nice and straightforward and the other thing with when it comes to the claws and do exactly the same. So just work your way around that with all the, the corn red and we'll give it another highlight and that's done and then we'll come back and we'll get that uh, skin highlighted up. 
before we uh, finish off with the base and any and the rocks and her face. Final highlight on the claws and on the kind of these sharp bits is Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going from about halfway down, just catching the edge. Nice and simple. Same for the claws. So go all the way around, get that done. Uh, we're getting there, so we'll do the skin next. Then we'll do her head, uh, and then I think we're pretty much there. And I'll show you how to paint the base as well. So for the flesh uh, on the beast and on oh, her hand and her face, we're going back to Celestia Grey. Now I've thinned this a little bit because it's quite thick, and we want to firstly get rid of that little bit of dust that I had on there. And we're looking to apply this kind of over those large muscular areas and then what we'll find is that it'll start to blend in as it dries now obviously we've got quite a bit of uh, color going on underneath here and you can see how because it's thin it doesn't go on too thickly and it'll, it'll dry nicely and this is where we can look to blend it into some of these areas here so for example if we just pull it across and work it back in use it to highlight the brighter areas sometimes it'll work quite nicely so we've got quite a bit to do with this working it all the way around the model so take your time let it dry before we go back for more there'll be places like you know on the tail here where you can pull it along the edge just to get a nice even highlight like that but in general it's uh, it's fairly straightforward you can tidy up any mistakes you've made get some of these back in so that's on on the body there when it comes to her face now bear with me while I try and make sure that we're in focus we're just looking to highlight up all the brows and leave very little of that shadowing on there we want to build that up because we want her skin on her face to be fairly smooth so hopefully i've done that in focus uh, we will zoom in a little bit on the face in a bit anyway so don't worry if i've messed that up a little bit so hopefully you'll have something that looks uh, a little bit like this now. And the last colour we're going to use to highlight the skin is some Ulthuan Grey. And what I'll do, we'll, we'll finish up highlighting the, the main body here. And then we'll, we'll have a look at the um, at the head. And we'll, we'll do that separately. But essentially what we're looking for is just those biggest raised areas. Again, this Ulthuan Grey is fairly, fairly thin. So if you need to do multiple coats to get the effect you're looking for, then you can do if you put a bit too much on and you can just cover it back up with some of the uh, Celestra Grey that you have used. Again, it'll once it dries, it'll blend back down into the into what you've already done there. So again, work your way around. We you need to add more, add more in. And then we'll come back we'll have a little look at it we'll get onto the head and start highlighting that and we'll start to have a look at some of the the features on there such as the eyes how we get them to have that kind of red look uh, and also getting that streak in the hair for the hair streak we're just going to take some celestra gray now this is the same one we used earlier, so it's going to be very thin, so just be careful it doesn't uh, run off at pace. I'm just going to paint it through there and follow it through. A little bit like we did with the, uh, with the skin really, is let it dry and then we'll highlight it with some uh, old thorn grey. Let's just get that done. You may need two coats. Uh, and like I said, we'll, when it comes to the face itself, we just want to highlight up the 
prominent areas using that celestial gray just like that so let it all dry and then we'll come back and we'll highlight the the face and that streak so highlighting the flesh again we've got that ultra one gray there it's nice and thin so make sure we haven't got too much on our brush and again we're kind of looking for those really prominent raised areas cheekbones we've got quite a bit to do really with the Ulthuan grey you can potentially mix the Ulthuan and the uh, Celestra grey to get uh, kind of a mid-tone if you think this looks a bit harsh So in terms of what that looks like, just take a little bit of both, mix them together like that, and then you can paint that through. That looks okay as well. So let that dry. I'm going to put some Althuan Grey through the hair as well, and just refine some of this once it's dry with some uh, some more Althuan Grey, and then we'll come back and have a look at the eyes and the teeth. So it's my favourite uh, thing to do on camera, just taking a little bit of white scar. And the first thing we're going to do is going to paint those fangs. So get those done, just like that. And then we want to paint the eyes with this white scar, just like that. So let them dry and we'll, uh, we'll make them red and, and angry next. Getting the kind of red ring effect around the eyes is, is pretty straightforward. Just gonna take some Carabur Crimson, just paint that over everything that we've just kind of done with the white. And you can see there you kind of get that nice effect. So a little dot of white on it. The job's a good one. Same thing with the kind of the lip there. Just paint around the fangs to get that lip. Uh, like I said, that's all white, and that's the head done. So we'll go back to the main model now. We'll get the base finished, and then Lagava is ready to terrorise everyone. Back on the main body. So the first thing is there's a lot of vines growing up the kind of the rocks here. So it's going to use some Militarum green just to paint them. Don't worry about getting it everywhere because we're going to paint over it in a, in a moment. So paint all the vines with this Militarum green, and then we'll come back and we'll base the rest of it. There's a few skulls on the back, so you can just paint these with some skeleton hoard. Again, if you've spilt anything over the grey sear kind of prime that you've got, then just use the pot to paint it back or, or any light colour really. So get that done nice and easy, and then we'll come back in and we'll get the get the stone moving next. So for the stonework, real simple, we're going to go back to Mechanica Standard Grey to base it and literally we're just going to paint this over. It's fairly thin, so don't worry too much if it doesn't cover uh, totally all in one hit. That That's absolutely fine. It's not essential because what we're looking for is rough stonework. This is quite, uh, what's the word, quite worn, quite swampy stonework. So get that all covered. One coat will be fine, even if it's not even, and then we'll come back and we'll start to highlight it before we give it that swampy feel. So you can see I've painted that really, really roughly. And the next thing, we're just going to continue that theme with a bit of Dawnstone. And we're going to continue that kind of rough effect of the painting. And this is fairly thin, and essentially what I'm doing, just following the shape of those bricks leaving the Mechanicus grey in the recesses just brushing down like that like I said very very messy not taking too much care at all so work your way around get that done over all the blocks use an old brush and we'll come back for a highlight before we start to tie it all together. And we're going to continue along these lines using Administratum Grey, which is obviously a lighter grey. And we're just going to kind of stipple this all over those blocks, focusing 
I guess towards the sharper edges doesn't matter if you get it in any of the recesses because uh, we're gonna tie all this together very shortly just wiping the brush over almost like a kind of dry brush effect but not in the truest sense of it let's get that done and we'll tie it all together next once it's all dried to pull this whole thing together we're going to take some Athonian camo shade and basically paint this all over and you can see it's starting to give a bit of a green tint to it all which kind of reflects the box art and reflects uh, a bit of a monkey mucky kind of area don't let it pool anywhere just paint it over so it acts a bit like a filter uh, getting into some of the recesses you know if I do that you don't want to you don't want to leave it like that you just want to paint that all around so work that all over let it dry thoroughly we'll come back we've got one step uh, to do before you know we worry about putting it all back together and getting the rest of the base done and have a look on the turntable once we're happy that that Athonian camo shade is dry and go back to the uh, administratum grey and again this is just a little more precise now with a more precise brush and we're just going to kind of stipple a little bit along some of the edges of these rocks just to just to pick them out a little bit in there because I've uh, gone over where it's not quite dry and that's messed it up essentially you want to work your way around and like I said just catching stippling some of these edges pulling the brushes along just getting some some highlights in there take your time enjoy it we're at the end so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it all together I'm going to complete the base and then we'll have a little look at it on the turntable next so there we have it, Laukavai is done, ready to terrorise anything on the tabletop. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me make sure I'm producing the kind of content that you want to see. If you'd like to support me and the channel, you can do so using the links in the description. There's a link to my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me via our Discord, as well as a live Frequently Asked Questions show every month on YouTube and some other exclusive content and giveaways. There's also the links for Goblin Gaming where you can get up to 20% off all your wargaming needs. And there's my Amazon affiliate links where you can see some of my recommended equipment. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.